Tropical Wave is now officially an invest with a high chance for tropical development. What's going on, guys? Certified meteorologist Jonathan Keg is back with you. We're going to break this all down. There's an increasing shot that there's going to be impacts felt by this thing in the United States. We're going to go over the track, a bunch of the models, some big changes with those models, and talk about some of those potential impacts closer to the end of the video. Before we jump into all things Invest 97, if you want to stay updated on this and the rest of hurricane season, which looks like it's going to ramp up big time. Time, hit that subscribe button if you find value in this content please hit that thumbs up button it really does help us out a lot all right so here it is on satellite it still does not look like a lot by any means we do have thunderstorm activity blossoming as it works its way into warmer water around Puerto Rico around the Dominican Republic and Haiti and it will continue to be around warm water the deal is over the next couple of days it's going to be interacting with Cuba so we're not expecting much in the way of tropical development over the next 48 hours or so here is the deal you see that big red blob area this is the potential development zone as designated by the National Hurricane Center and it's in that zone that is where we could see tropical development take place over the next seven days again it's unlikely over the next two because of all the land interaction but once we get into the weekend and early next week we could see that development happen we're going to get into the models in just one second but nonetheless uh the longer time this spends over water so if that stays on the western side of that development zone that's when we could be looking at a stronger storm here are the spaghetti models this is the first full slate of models it was just declared an invest this morning that means an area of investigation so that's when the hurricane hunters start to get their plan and that is when the national hurricane center starts running the designed hurricane models on the disturbance so we're going to start getting better data from this point on to help with some of the uncertainty and we'll talk about some of that uncertainty coming up in a little bit but you see here on the early going that most of the modeling at at this point we're going to have much more of this much more of these spaghetti models coming in want to favor this thing interacting with cuba over the next several days and then really working its way back up into the eastern gulf again that's something that we do not want i'm going to show you the water temperatures in just one second but nonetheless something getting into the eastern gulf will have the opportunity to really get on the stronger side if it comes back in toward Tampa or really toward Fort Myers, it will be on the weaker side. It wouldn't have enough time after getting beat up by Cuba. But nonetheless, um, we want to watch that closely because if anything gets out, the further west it gets out, we will be watching uh, for the potential for some serious strengthening as well going forward. Once we uh, get there, that's going to be the issue. So here's kind of the breakdown or the timeline if you're wondering again what you could see so dominican republic and haiti we're dealing with some thunderstorm activity now as mentioned development is going to be basically non-existent over the next 48 hours so we're not really going to learn much about this system because it's not going to be able to generate its center due to the fact it is uh interacting with land we really need to get that center latched on that means everything for where this goes in the long term so i think you're going to hear us talk about uh, a great deal of uncertainty really for the next 48 hours because we just can't determine where that launching point off of Cuba is going to be. If it's further west, we're talking about a stronger storm. If it is further east, it's going to be a weaker system, but that means a lot of heavy rain coming to Florida. So Saturday, we're expecting this thing to be in central to western Cuba, maybe as far to the east as the Bahamas. But really, I think we're focusing on the center and west side. This isn't an official forecast cone. This is something we drew here for the timeline. That will happen if the Hurricane Center designates it as a potential tropical cyclone or this becomes a tropical depression. That is when the official forecast will be out. But nonetheless, by Sunday into Monday, that's when Florida could be looking at some of those direct impacts. Some of the models lately have been suggesting as well that this thing could stall or be very, very slow once it gets close to the Florida Peninsula. It's in the realm of possibilities. Not many of the computer forecasts at this point have, are in that camp they've kind of trended away from that for the time being but it's still a possibility because of the environment that it's getting into so here is what is steering 
Invest 97L, our tropical wave. First and foremost, what has driven it into uh, Puerto Rico yesterday towards the Dominican Republic and Haiti today is that strong Bermuda high. And our L marks the spot there. That's our tropical wave. The spaghetti models are back overlaid on this because I wanted to show you here. I think it really uh, plays into what is steering this thing. What has made it go to the north, and we were hoping that it could get its act together early because that means that it would have stayed out to sea. It would have interacted with the Bahamas, uh, Turks and Caicos, but it would have just been gusty thunderstorms still because the environment in the upper levels still weren't that great. So we would, it would have been a, kind of a win for everybody. Don't want flooding in the Bahamas or anything like that, but it wouldn't have been too, too strong um, if it went into the Atlantic side until it got off of the Carolina coast and back out to sea. The deal with this is you see this blue shaded area coming out of the Great Lakes and the Ohio River Valley. That is a trough. So that dip in the jet stream weakened the Bermuda High on the western side. That weakness, if you will, allowed this entity, this disturbance to feel the trough and be lifted north. The other deal that we are watching is uh, there's going to be a lot of heat. Over the next several days in the desert southwest, western Texas, that's this big chunk of upper, uh, this big upper high pressure center over to the desert southwest, over to the western plains. That is going to dictate this thing really in protecting the western side of Louisiana and Texas from Invest 97L and whatever it becomes from coming in your direction. But the deal is you have that upper level flow pushing in from the north from that guy. And then you have this clockwise flow around the Bermuda High lifting it north. So you have two things kind of fighting against each other to move this thing. So if it hits the sweet spot just right on the money and gets into this area in that certain time frame this weekend, it may be just bouncing around Florida and parts of the deep south, Georgia, Mississippi, Alabama, to the Carolinas. So that is where the uncertainty lies. That degree of forecast uncertainty really goes up whenever you're talking about the steering currents kind of dropping out and again that is in the realm of possibilities because of this setup i keep on mentioning about we obviously don't want it to get into the gulf of mexico at all due to the fact these water temperatures are juiced they are untapped look at that uh, towards the big bend of florida we have temperatures already of around 90 degrees uh, off the tampa st pete beach coastline near 90 and again even further out here uh we've got a lot of heat coming through uh, through the Florida Straits and it's it's hot the water temperature is really hot it's not only hot but it is deeply hot so I show this oftentimes when we're tracking these things for the potential for some rapid intensification this is one of the bigger deals this is one of the biggest ingredients to forecast rapid intensification and it's this tropical cyclone heat potential that's the fancy scientific term for the graphic that i'm showing you but we'll call it tropical fuel because essentially that's what it is uh tropical systems need to have warm water and if they're going to be slow moving they need to have that water to be deeply warm go down way below the ocean surface because it churns up the cooler stuff that resides below the ocean surface because there's not enough sunlight down there and it remains cooler. You know the drill. The deal with this is that if we have something coming off of Cuba, and again, where it launches off, off of here is important. And again, I'm just drawing some potential lines here. It's all going to cross this loop current. That is what this is here. It kind of loops back and into the Gulf Stream. Uh, that is some big time fuel right there now my hope were to be that it's interacted for cuba for so long it's got to pick itself off the ground because again at that point we're not going to have a very strong system or even a circulation at that point because it's going to be beaten up by cuba but if something were to if it comes up this way there's a lot of time to spend over the warmer water here to get its act together um, and there are other things too that would really promote strengthening and that's going to be the upper level winds so this is the european and by the way if you're following the models this is now the second time this season uh that we pay close attention to the modeling the european is losing again it's 1776 all over again uh the american gfs is cleaning its clocks it did so with barrel and it has done so with uh this system if you've been following the models I mentioned big changes early on in the video. The European was aggressive going to the Bahamas and then east of Florida and then out 
east of the Carolinas. That has since changed. I'm showing you the European right now because it has since gone back into the Gulf of Mexico, but I'm showing you this more for kind of the evolution. And we have this tropical wave and still by Saturday at 10 o'clock. Okay, so this is Saturday, late into the evening. It still does not look like much. Now the European is one of the weaker solutions and I think it's probably wrong on there. I'll show you some other stuff coming up in a second. The Icon model, which I do like, and it did very well with Barrel coming up in just one second, so stick with me. What I want to show you on this, though, there is really the potential for it to, if it has some kind of, if it misses, if it rides the northern coast of Cuba and just offshore, it will have the opportunity to, to get very strong because of this right here. This is the upper level winds I have overlaid. One of the other components that tropical systems need to thrive is a way to breathe, outflow channels as we call them. On top of, on top, I may have called this barrel, and sorry if I did that, this is Invest 97L. I'm getting ahead of myself uh, when talking about the icon. But we have a big chunk of high pressure. We can see that with these counterclock, or with these clockwise winds, around high pressure winds are clockwise. What this does, it allows the system to breathe. Um, so let me get a different color on my telestrator here, and I'll show you. You see that there. See how these winds aloft are letting the air evacuate. And when air is lifted out up top, it can replenish it from the surface. So we have this circulation being created. There's high ventilation going on. So again, if we get this thing out here, it's going to have all that juice that I just showed you and a very favorable upper level environment for rapid intensification. So when I say I don't want this thing getting into the eastern Gulf of Mexico, I really don't want this thing getting into the eastern Gulf of Mexico. So there's a lot to iron out with that. Uh, and then there's that pinwheel. And again, that even exact it, 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 the upper high above it gets it even stronger um there is the high itself again and that's going to push it back to the east and that's going to be something else that we're watching does this thing come closer to the big bend or does it cut over towards central florida or does it come into here so there's still a lot of data that need to, needs to be collected by the hurricane hunters to really determine that i know it's kind of close to land it is close to land if you're in the dominican republic or haiti we're getting impacted by it but there's not going to be a lot of time to prepare with this, uh, whatever it may be. And right now, there's not much suggesting it's going to become a hurricane because of the fast nature of the land interaction with Cuba and then impacts to the Florida. Um, but again, if it keeps going west, that's going to be one of the things that we are looking for. All right, before we get into some of the Florida impacts or the potential Florida impacts, if you have any questions, comment post in the comments where you're tuning in from post if you have any comments i'm very active in the comment section on this page on this channel um so please post them in let me know where you're tuning in from and if you want to hit me up on any of the other social uh things that are out there i'm at jonathan kegis on x jonathan kegis new six on facebook at certified kegis on the instagram hit me up via email as well jkegis at wkmg.com we're based out of central florida so we are watching you uh we are watching it for you across the entire tropical atlantic if you also want another stay another way to stay updated on the tropics Go to clickorlando.com slash newsletters or scan the QR code. That will take you to a page where you can sign up for the Tropics Watch newsletter. Every Monday and as needed, uh, we come to your inbox with the latest updates that you need to know when it comes to watching the Tropics. Again, that is free. The no hype, no scare tactics thing applies for all of that. So if you want it broken down like we just did with science and meteorology, if you want to learn something and want to know how you can kind of look at these models too uh, for yourself and, and kind of gauge on what's going on, we talk a lot about that as well. All right, so I mentioned about the ICON model. So before we get into the Florida stuff, I wanted to show you that. Um, and it has kind of it launching from Western Cuba. So right off the bat, I don't like that. Um, and then it has it going up to the west of Tampa and then coming towards the Big Bend. The ICON, as well as the GFS, 
have really been having and highlighting that Western track, that golf track from the get-go. I think there's only been one run of the Icon that followed the European for just a split second, um, but then it quickly went back to South Florida and then to the golf. So it has done that. There's still going to likely be a lot of windshield wiper effects of them going back and forth. So they're going to drive you crazy for the next couple of days. But now that the Hurricane Hunters are getting up in there, that's a start. We need this thing to get a center to kind of finish the deal here. But the icon would have this being a uh, tropical storm coming into the Florida panhandle. At latest run, it doesn't have it stalling out, but it does still do some weird things with it. It has it slowing down and then has it going east. Um, but the Bermuda High is also just to the east, that one that I showed you earlier. And there's been some things that were suggest a loop-de-loop -loop somewhere, whether that's in the Gulf, whether that's over the Deep South, or whether that's back over the Atlantic. That remains to be seen because it's just going to depend on timing and when it hits those steering currents. But there is the potential for some shenanigans as we get into Tuesday and Wednesday, whether it be stalling out over Florida, Georgia, the Carolinas, or like coming out over the Carolinas and then looping back in toward Florida and Georgia. So a lot remains to be seen with this and what exactly it does. So again, keep it here. Uh, we are going to be watching this closely for the next several days as we uh, get that extra data in from the Hurricane Hunters as well. All right, so I mentioned about Florida. This is what the Euro does. And again, the darker the colors here, the heavier the rain. And you clearly see that there's some moderate to heavy rain over the Florida Peninsula. And then super stuff right off the coast, both east and west of Florida. That is the European solution. The GFS has it more consolidated because it does take it further west over the warmer waters of the Gulf of Mexico and focuses the heaviest rain at this point. This is no doubt going to change, um, but just wanted to show you again, likely the main impacts with this are going to be heavy rain unless we get this to really slow down over the Gulf of Mexico to take advantage of the warm water for a longer period of time. But you see they're over the Gulf Coast of Florida into the Big Bend and then closer to the Jacksonville area and then kind of hugging the Georgia coast and then up to the Carolina coast. So there is a lot to iron out. A lot to talk about over the next couple of days. Keep it here. Alrighty, guys, if you happen to find this content helpful, and I hope you did, consider hitting that subscribe button. Join this growing weather community. Hit, give it a thumbs up. It lets the YouTube share this with more people. And uh, to get the good information uh, out and not the scary stuff that, oh my gosh, it's coming. We're going to break this down calmly with Sound Science and Meteorology. We are here for you guys to have this weather conversation. That's why this channel is here, to kind of take out all the noise that you might find elsewhere and break this down together. We got you covered. All righty, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll catch you soon.